Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to the crash course of API testing with RESTRAP along with framework development. And in this crash course, we'll be talking about how we can perform integration testing with REST Sharp. And this particular crash course is part of our course API testing with RESTRAP along with framework development, which is available in Udemy. And this course have been evolved so much that it has transformed quite a lot. And now we are talking about the framework development along with the integration testing itself with REST Sharp. So if you wanted to learn how to build the entire framework that we have built in this API testing with REST Sharp course, please go ahead and watch my Udemy course. All the details are available over there. But for now, this crash course is gonna be specifically talking about integration testing and all the lectures of that particular section on the course is gonna be available in YouTube for free. So let's get started. All these days we have been testing our application with real application instance to be spawned before running the test. These types of testings are ideal for end-to-end -end testing and places where there are dedicated environment with applications being deployed. But what if we wanted to test our applications in pipeline where the application is not yet deployed? So how we can achieve this kind of testing? Well, this can be done using what is called as in-memory application. So we can run the application in memory and this way test runs in pipeline without deploying the application. And this kind of test are otherwise called as integration tests and are very useful in places where we don't want to deploy the application in a separate or stable environments. And there are even further advantage with this approach because you can leverage the power of the in-memory execution to have faster execution. With faster execution, it doesn't involve all the ceremony of your application to be running in a separate environment or an infrastructure. All you have to do is just run the application in memory. And also the next advantage is isolation because every single time the application is spawned, it is going to be running as a new instance and you don't necessarily have to clean up the environment or have all these deletion of the database and stuff to be done because it's all going to be done in memory. And that is the major power of the isolation with the in-memory execution. And also it is very easy to scale. It reduces the cost of deployment and it is much easier to maintain. So these are the advantages of having in-memory execution using the integration testing approach of testing the application. But as that said, how do we really achieve all these things that we are talking about over here? Well, in order to do this, Web Application Factory is the answer. So what is this Web Application Factory? Well, Web Application Factory is an invaluable tool for testing ASP.NET Core application. It provides a realistic test environment by hosting the applications in memory, allowing comprehensive testing of the entire HTTP pipeline. By customizing the factory, you can tailor the test environment to fit specific need, making it easier to write robust and reliable integration test. And most importantly, please be aware that this Web Application Factory is very, very helpful tool for testing an ASP.NET Core application. So let's say if you have an application which is built using Spring Boot, and if you wanted to test it in the .NET world, it is not gonna work. And similarly, if you have a React-based application which is running on the UI, and you wanted to do the testing using this web application factory, it is not gonna work as well. So it is very, very specific for the ASP.NET Core application, and especially the web API application for the HTTP pipeline. So that is where we are targeting towards. And because this is a REST Sharp course, and we're targeting towards the API testing, this integration testing that we're talking about is also targeted towards there. Well, as that said, we are gonna see how we can make use of this web application factory to perform the integration test. But before we jump into the testing, let's first understand the application and its architecture itself. So what I mean about the ASP.NET application architecture is that all the ASP.NET app will have the life cycle while the application starts up. And as you can see over here, in this particular architecture, we have got the program.cs file as the starting point of the file, which is gonna have two methods, which is gonna involve creating a host builder and configuring a web host defaults. I mean, it's gonna be a bit different for the minimal API setup of the ASP.NET, which we're not gonna talk about in this particular course, but actually, most of the ASP.NET application that you are using without minimal API is gonna have a program.cs file and a startup.cs file. And the application that we have been using all these days for the REST API within our REST Sharp course is basically gonna have the program.cs file and a startup.cs file. 
And as you can see, this create host builder and the configure host defaults method is then going to call the startup.cs file, which is going to configure the services and it's going to also configure the middleware if there is any. And because this services is going to be basically registering all the services into and collections of the service container, which is basically a dependency injection, it is then going to be used across your application while the application execution happens. So this is an life cycle of the application in a nutshell, especially focusing towards the program.cs file and the startup.cs file. Just don't worry about how the entire ASP.NET application works, which is not covered in here. I'm just targeting towards these two files, how the life cycle actually works. And as you have seen this diagrammatic view, now you are in a very good position to understand the exact same thing while I show you in the application in a couple of minutes. But for now, this is going to be the life cycle of an application startup, basically. And with this life cycle understanding that you have over here, Web Application Factory will take care of all these life cycle to happen once we pass the starting point of the application in the T entry over here. And in our case, the T entry is nothing but a program file. So you know that the application starts with the program.cs file. So if you pass a entry in the Web Application Factory as program, then the Web Application Factory is going to take care of all the ceremonies of setting up these things for you automatically and it's all going to run the entire application in memory. That is what is happening behind the scene in the web application factory. Well, as that said, if you see our source code that we have been building all these days in a REST Sharp course, uh, where we have talked about the REST Sharp demo writer in our last section, this one, and over here is the thing that we are going to talk about the application itself. So you can see that we have got a startup.cs file, and we also got the program.cs file. As I told you, the startup of this particular application is basically going to be a program.cs file and it's going to have a create host builder. It also has got a configure host builder or the configure web host defaults with all these operations. And as you can see, it is using a startup method like use startup and it's going to call a startup class file. So this startup class file is nothing but the startup.cs file, which is this guy over here. So that's what is really calling. And this startup file, as you can see, is going to call the configure service method, which is going to configure all the different services which is required for the application. And it's also going to configure the middleware if it has any. And one of the middleware that we are setting up over here is basically the iApplication Builder and also the database context to set up the database and stuff. So this is how the application is basically working within our ASP.NET world. So if you try to even put a breakpoint in the uh, program.cs file over here, uh, and if you put a breakpoint over here, and if you try to debug this particular application by executing this one, you will notice that it is going to spin up the application for you over here. And you will notice that it is going to hit the first breakpoint in the main method because you know that every program in the .NET world starts with the execution in the main method. So it is hitting over here and it is going to run from there. So if I just run through the breakpoint, this next going to the create web host builder. And then if I just execute it even further, you will see that it is keep on going from there. So if we just put a breakpoint somewhere in the startup file over here, it is then going to land here as well. So that is how the application is basically going to be executed behind the scene. And now in our next lecture, we will see how we can make use of web application factory to call the program.cs file as the startup file to spawn the application in memory and how we can use it for our API testing using a rest chart.